Yeah, hello John good afternoon. Welcome to our show. Thank so you. we are here to talk about your upcoming docu drama so named Hare Krishna. So tell me something how did the idea of a docu drama take birth? What was the logic behind? Yeah, I I released a film way back in 1974 called The Hare Krishna People. I was very interested in the group and my uh, investigation led me to Prabhupada. I met him in India. I was fascinated by the person his personality and the movement he represented the philosophy he uh, translated one book called Bhagavad Gita as it is and it's quite different it gives a very direct literal interpretation of Bhagavad Gita in fact it's not interpreted he says it's actually the real meaning so that um, book has has made many many krishna devotees all over the world so his influence was tremendous so i asked him at that time after releasing that first film could i make a film in your life And he said what is the need? Prabhupada was very humble. So I said people in the future will want to know who started the Hari Krishna movement, obviously. So he thought for a moment and he agreed to that. So I made a film in 1983 on his life, but it was didn't reach the public so much. So I've been collecting footage over the years and we have a lot of archival footage of Prabhupada and his ISKCON movement. And we decided at this point to go ahead and make a, a film for the public. took a long time but better late than never <laughs> so like you said you had spoken to him in 1973 or 4 about yeah. making a film why did it take you so long to come up with it well as i said we we did release a, another documentary on his life in 1983 <clears throat> but uh we propaganda and his movement has become very famous actually propaganda's not that well known so we decided at this point we had funds we had a team to go ahead and and really do something nice and it's it's turned out amazingly well the reception has been incredible but tell me something why a docu drama is opposed to a biopic or a film with professional actors uh we wanted prapa to, to play himself i mean i that's going to come that's going to happen but i'm not sure i'm the, i'm the person to do it uh but prapa he he really comes through in this film and a lot of it's due to we took a lot of sound bites from 18 ha- unheard sorry 1800 hours of audio and uh, Prabhupada is telling his own story in this film it's it makes it from very real and very present so in the past there have been many documentaries on the iskon movement what makes the hari krishna the pre- present project different from what has been shown earlier yeah i wouldn't say there are many documentaries on, on the movement i haven't seen that many uh, you know in public or in the public arena but there's nothing nothing like this for sure this is an hour and a half a 90 minute documentary docu drama there's quite a few dramatic scenes reenacted so there's nothing quite like this out there can you describe your first meeting with swami ji and how did it change your life or your vision yeah i met for prabhupad in surat gujarat first time i was a freelance photographer and had to do a masters thesis in photography i decided to come to india to do it on the origins of Krishna consciousness. I really didn't know what that meant. <laughs> I was, you know, in it really uh, entranced with the whole idea of coming to India and meeting Prabhupada. So I met him. He was very is a very powerful personality and he I could really feel that he cared about everyone he met, including myself. Prabhupada connected with the soul, you know, the, the really the person inside us. were these material everybody has a material body but that's proper instructed that's not our real self we're something other than that and he he really knew that realized it and practiced that in terms of you know really connecting to the deep our deep inner selves what do you think distinguishes swami ji from other spiritual leaders that you have read about or have met over the course of your Again, I I think Prabhupada really cares about everyone. He, he has no no, no uh, really alternative motive in terms of his presentation of the philosophy. He didn't change anything. That's why I mentioned Bhagavad Gita as it is. There's nothing that's interpreted in there. It's really how Krishna meant it to be, and that's the potency in it. That, that Krishna's words are really coming through and affecting us deeply. Uh, again if you interpret those words then kind of the meaning becomes diffused but uh, tell me something why do you think the iskon or the hari krishna movement become such a big thing in the us in the 70s or the 60s what was the reason for that i think the authenticity of what prabhupada brought again the 
the real meaning of the ancient scriptures of India. This really connected with the youth that were pretty much lost in the 60s. They saw their parents, you know, become very uh, materially affluent after the war. They were war babies and they grew up in, in affluent society in America. And they weren't satisfied. It didn't satisfy the inner self. <clears throat> so Prabhupada brought a message of, uh, you know, exactly who we are, what we're meant to be here for, what is our duty, and what is the ultimate goal of life. And people are really connected to that. They wanted answers. What difficulties did you encounter while making this project? The biggest difficulty was cutting down the mass of material that we had. We had 31 hours of archival of Prabhupada and his movement collected over the years. We had about 1,800 hours of audio to go through. And from that, we selected Prabhupada telling his own story. He didn't talk about himself much. We found you know, a few uh, sentences here and there to really tell his story. And then the probably 100 hours of interviews, 80 to 100 hours of interviews, location shots, reenactments. So putting all that, all that together was <laughs> a challenge, big challenge. Yeah, there were two other co-directors on this project, right? Yeah. So were there any kind of creative differences and how did you guys deal with it? Yeah, there were creative differences. I mean, ultimately as a director, I had to, you know, <clears throat> pass everything by, by myself and approve or disapprove. But our team came up with some great ideas. I mean, it was, it was a gr great collaborative effort. My wife, co-director, Jean Greiser, Lauren Ross, also co-director. She was from Australia, recently graduated from film school very talented, very good in storytelling. So we had a great team. Do you think a person who isn't a follower of ISKCON, how would he have made this movie? Does it make a, was it a difference that you are a part of ISKCON? So? I think I have, you know, a real, very good understanding of the inner workings of ISKCON and the philosophy. So there's an advantage there. Perhaps some may say the disadvantage is you're, you're not objective enough. But our film was really to present Prabhupada's life, and I think we did we did a good job in that. We didn't overcoat it with anything else, just just the facts, you know, and the interviews of people who knew him very very well. So what what is the objective behind this project? What do you seek to achieve by this documentary? We hope to inspire people to uh, be inspired by Prabhupada's story. It's an incredible story. He came at age 70 with no money, no assets, no contacts, and uh, he started a worldwide movement. In fact, he's, he's hailed as one of the most successful persons starting fresh after the age of 70. So he, his, his success story is incredible. So that can inspire one. We found that people coming out of the theater are, have, have, an, have a sense of hope in this very difficult age and um, a sense of happiness also. Can you tell us a bit about what kind of response the docudrama has received over at the various film festivals that it has been screened at? Yeah, we, we won Best Picture at the Illuminate Film Festival in Arizona, USA. We didn't expect to get that. That was uh, We were in stiff competition with other films. But um, they love Prabhupada's story. And again, the story is, is incredible. The response, as I say, has been, has been really, really amazing, really heartwarming. We're thrilled by the response. So are you excited or nervous about its release in India over here? <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> good question. The response, I think, is going to be overwhelming. We had Indian, uh, people of Indian origin, see, many people see it in, in the States. And they were saying, please, you know, get this film to India. We've told our relatives, our friends about it. You know, get this over there as quick as possible. So it's been a while. We hoped to have released it sooner. But uh, again, better late than never. December 15th is coming in probably over 200 theaters. Tell me something. Do you think a Western follower and an Indian follower approaches the same concept in, a, in two different ways? What's the approach like if you, you have been observing people who are in the ISKCON movement, right? No, Prabhupada's you know, understanding and, and the way he uh, instructed the philosophy to us, gave us the philosophy. You'll find Indian, it doesn't matter, Indian American, European, Chinese, Russian, people from all countries and all walks of life are accepting 
the philosophy and accept, accepting Prabhupada's teachings. So it doesn't really matter. You'll find the same thing being spoken wherever you go around the world. So John, all the best for your film. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank, Thank you. Thank much. you. Bye.